lot of circulation. Good morning, everybody. This is a live severe weather briefing with another active day across the high plains expected today. We have a couple different target areas. Uh, earlier, it looked like western South Dakota would largely be in play, and uh, now it looks like it's kind of the target areas are focusing into the Nebraska panhandle southward uh, through eastern Colorado. And one thing we learned yesterday is that high plains insanity waits for nobody, and that's why you got to get out early, you got to stay disciplined, stay focused on the chase. Uh, here you can see a beefy wall cloud uh, that was intercepted about 20 miles to the south of Lyman. And this was just after that storm. Uh, the last tornado lifted uh, with that supercell after producing uh, multiple tornadoes near Pumpkin Center, including an incredible stovepipe uh, tornado down there. That shows you that Palmer Divide magic, uh, that little area of, uh, of elevated terrain, uh, that extends juts out from the front range that can act to funnel that moisture and those easterlies around the north side of it and that can enhance the low level shear available for those storms enhance the instability available as well and uh, here you can see another tornado warn storm that we intercepted yesterday that had quite favorable structure but really had no chance of producing a tornado uh, by this point uh, considering there was so much outflow out there and um, gizmo is about to produce a stool here it looks like so uh, i did take her out a little bit earlier and it was not yet uh, successful, so we are going to have to make this uh, briefing a little bit faster uh, than normal. But first, let's start off looking at the surface map. That's a good place to always start when you're breaking things down. And look at that. Look at how cold that it is up in South Dakota. So I took one glimpse of this surface map and saw these temperatures up in the 40s still a northerly component as well in the vicinity of the black hills a warm front is lifting northward uh, through the nebraska panhandle with temperatures rising up uh, through the 60s uh, the temperature is the top number dew point is the bottom number you can also see those upper 50s uh, and low 60s dew points uh, tracking from southeast off to the north and also i think the palmer divide could even be in play today look at that dew point in lyman uh, down there 58 uh, over 51 uh, not a bad moisture uh, profile down there for Lyman. As I was approaching that tornadic supercell yesterday, I saw that there was an upper 40s dew point that was in Lyman. So I definitely was concerned that that tornadic supercell, as it was moving off to the north, was going to impact Lyman. But then when I saw that dew point, I wasn't as concerned. And so then dropping south, uh, we almost caught the last cycle there of that storm producing, but I didn't quite make it. Uh, but look at all those that cold air up into uh, uh, western South Dakota. I just talked to a storm chaser friend up there that said it feels like November, and they are dropping off to the south. Definitely a lot of backed winds in a ripe environment setting up for the Nebraska Panhandle as well. And uh, you can see that the 3-kilometer NAM, the 12Z 3-kilometer NAM, is definitely picking up on that. This is a 0-3-kilometer to three kilometer EHI there, uh, kind of a quick, lazy approach to uh, see where the co-location of that low-level shear in the high plains uh, and surface base instability uh, reside. And that's at 21Z, so it shows a, a lack of uh, destabilization there across western South Dakota. So I do think that in the next outlook, uh, it's probably going to be appropriate to expand uh, that risk just a little bit southward. That's why the models have been picking up on more of a bow echo type of a scenario up into western South Dakota. But based on this, it looks like at least through 23Z, look at that environment in the uh, Nebraska Panhandle out here by the 3-kilometer NAM. We'll also look at the uh, at the HRRR PDS uh, tornado sounding and hodograph there. As you can see, look at that thing. 
Yeah, and that's 65 over 63 of a profile. So it's already up into the low to mid 60s. So we're likely to see even more destabilization than that. But even if you do get into the mid 60s, that's still more than sufficient to break that cap. You can see a little veer back veer between about one and three kilometers. I don't think that'll be an issue when your uh, one kilometer wind is up at 50 knots out of the due south like this. But definitely quite favorable kinematics across a large portion of the Nebraska Panhandle. It is difficult chasing up there with these large counties. Uh, this is gonna be just to the west of Cherry County. Not a ton of roads out there as well. But let's expand uh, this view just a little bit south now because there also is a southern mode across eastern Colorado, eventually tracking into northwestern Kansas. That environment's gonna really become ripe down near Burlington as well. And there you can start to see that environment down into northwestern Kansas near the Colorado-Kansas border start to come together, especially by zero Z. And a little bit after, watch what happens when their low-level jet starts to increase. You should start to see a dramatic expansion in the low-level shear down there, banking up against that storm into northwestern Kansas. Looking at the uh, 850s here, that's at 21Z. Uh, pretty backed here, uh, 30 knots across uh, the elevated Nebraska panhandle there. 700 due southerly at 40 knots. Look at this low-level jet streaming into northeastern Colorado at 21Z. Wow. So this is definitely quite a robust low level jet here out of the due south at 700 that's in excess of 50 knots 50 to 55 knots there nosing into northeastern colorado uh, nosing into the ray area here by 22z uh, let's take a look and see what kind of storms are moving into that environment and look at that definitely northeastern colorado look at those uh, storms those are going to be supercell storms possibly impacting the yuma uh, to the ray area here and those are going to evolve towards southwestern Nebraska, even northwestern Kansas as we get closer to 6 p.m. mountain time, finally reaching that Kansas border uh, by this time. But this definitely shows this southern mode dominating uh, the three kilometer NAM. It has more of a linear mode off to the north. Even the Nebraska panhandle northward looks quite linear up through the Black Hills. And that's because uh, that um, instability just isn't realizing up there into western South Dakota. Yes. So it looks like Gizmo is about ready to go to the bathroom here, folks. Uh, but these are going to be the storms that I'll be on, starting off in northeastern Colorado and then shimmering down uh, toward northwestern Kansas with time. This is the 12Z, 3-kilometer NAM, and we do have one hell of a low-level jet feeding into this right here. Look at that at 850, increasing over 35 knots here, and it's likely going to verify much stronger than that as well across this southern mode. Take a look at the HRRR, low-level jet that far east. A little bit more robust on the uh, HRRR for that southern mode. It does have this channel of a 700 millibar jet, too, of 35 to 50 knots out there. And the HRRR has that as well. A little bit further north than the 3-kilometer NAM, uh, but it is there, that 50-knot uh, uh, low-level jet here across the high plains of eastern Colorado. Quite impressive for this event. And look at that. Not surprisingly, you have a massive bullseye of 0 to 3 kilometer energy helicity index there. That 0 to 3 kilometer SRH with a surface base cape 21Z. I'm just, just north of that blob, so it should be a pretty routine chase today. Just dropping down to that northeastern Colorado corridor. And we already have PDS tornado soundings uh, here forecast by 21Z. That's 3 p.m. Mountain Time, 70 over 61. Incredible profile there. 50 knots at 700, just above the ground. And look at that hodograph. That is as textbook as it gets out here across the high plains. We kind of have high plains uh, with uh, a Great Plains hybrid type of a sounding. You do have a very strong low-level jet with this as that trough is beginning to eject. But it's not your typical high plane setup where you have easterlies to the lowest two kilometers, a post frontal environment, then it flips around to westerly aloft. Those are more of the zonal uh, flow type setups that we get later on this summer, uh, like a later June, uh, July uh, type of a setup. Uh, but this is, is one that goes big. This one's a little bit more of a June 12, 2017 type of a profile here. Not quite an ejecting trough 
but there is a very strong trough that's been spinning out across the western U.S. for days. And every day we get more and more flow in the upper levels, in the mid of the upper levels of the, of the uh, troposphere, so we get even stronger wind shear profiles. But boy, look at that. Let's take a look at the... Uh, I usually don't like the HRRR in the high plains, but at least with these hybrid setups, they could do pretty good, a pretty good job with that moisture setup. And this is by 21Z. We already get storms. They initiate by 1 to 2 p.m. out here, and that's why you got to be dialed in. Get down there near that Akron area. Track these storms off to the north northeast. You can keep dropping down, but really, it looks like a very active day here across the Nebraska Panhandle. A couple of little renegades there developing up near Alliance as well. Sydney looks like it's going to be an active day today for severe weather, extending down toward the Sterling area as well. Those are going to be uh, supercell storms embedded within a very strongly sheared environment. And then we really get that southern mode to start cranking by about 5 to 6 p.m. mountain time. Look at these storms out at the tail end out here. These are going to be nasty supercells down there, closing in on the Burling area, building down to the I-70 corridor as well. PDS tornado soundings all over the place, uh, but definitely this northeastern Colorado, southwestern Nebraska, northwestern Kansas area looks very dangerous for significant severe weather, gorilla hail, maybe even a strong tornado or two out there as well. I know it. I think basically if there's condensation all the way to the ground, especially in the high plains where you have some higher cloud bases, you know that that requires a very low pressure to get that condensation all the way to the ground. So you know that you're dealing with a strong tornado. So that one out near Pumpkin Center, I bet, was also quite substantial. So I'm going to take Gizmo out again uh, to go to the bathroom here uh, as these supercells are progressing toward northwestern Kansas, southwestern Nebraska. Looks like a big day, and that's going to also continue after sunset uh, here across uh, the intersection of Kansas, Nebraska, Colorado, Ray area up into southwestern Nebraska as well. McCook, uh, probably end up near McCook or something, and Applebee's out near McCook. That's when summer camp can begin after we see all these tornadoes. And then here is by 9 p.m. Still these supercell storms cranking down here within that intensifying low-level jet. That's only going to get stronger with time. 45 to 50 knots out here now streaming into that storm. So it's a pretty easy target area. Everybody's going to be down here. The whole entire storm chasing herd will be down in this area. So it'll be impossible for a tornado to go unreported uh, or even streamed live uh, or, or not streamed live. So uh, everybody's going to be on these, and that's incredible. Uh, increasing awareness for these storms. We'll know before they produce, just before they produce. I'll be streaming live as well, multi-platform stream today. And next week looks incredibly active as well. So we are just getting started here. Uh, this is Monday evening, northwestern Kansas, southwestern Nebraska, northeastern Colorado here. That's the target area. Big day expected today. Uh, so definitely stay tuned to those watches and warnings if you do live in this area. Here's that wall cloud to the south of Lyman yesterday. Just as those storms behind it were sending out some outflow undercutting that storm. You can see that kind of massive formation of a condensation blob. Even though that looks like a tornado is about to happen, that's actually the outflow from the storms back behind it, kind of giving that RFD just a little bit of a surge. And that ended up preventing a tornado from happening here, about 20, 25 miles to the south of Lyman. But you can definitely see that rotation very apparent in the northern edge of that wall cloud. So thank you, everybody, for tuning in. I'm going to get back to my routine here and get uh, Gizmo to go to the bathroom. And uh, we are going to get a good foundation breakfast this time and then drop down into the target area and uh, be disciplined and be on schedule today. Never stop chasing.